Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. The video that truly kickstarted this YouTube channel was about Bob Lotz and Jim Chanos and how wrong they were about the competition. And now Jim Chanos has just thrown in the towel and is ending his hedge fund, losing about 97% of his worth since 2008 by shorting Tesla. So I thought it would be fun looking back at that video and the so-called competition and Tesla killers that Jim was talking about that would come and destroy Tesla. Porsche's coming. How expensive? Sorry. The big, oh, let's say that again. You think Porsche's coming with their their own car? Porsche's it's coming with the Mission E, and and and, so and by, Jaguar with and the so, I-Pace. and so is Audi with the e-tron. And take a look at how they are actually doing. What happened? to these Tesla killers from 2018 and 2019. And let's celebrate that this little YouTuber back in 2019 argued against this billion dollar hedge fund. And it turned out I was right and Big Jim Chanos turned out to be wrong. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. The second video I ever did on this channel was called They Were Wrong, showcasing Bob Lotz and Jim Chanos and how they said the big boys were coming. They had better technology, better specs, Tesla has no advantages and they would all come out with 300 miles a range of EVs at a better price. Tesla has no advantage, no technological advantage, no software advantage, no battery advantage, no advantages whatsoever. The big boys are coming and they're coming with sexy looking cars at the same price point with better features, faster cars, great styling. And so what was unique for Tesla is no longer unique. But that didn't happen. And all the cars they were talking about and the mainstream media was calling Tesla killers was the Jaguar I-Pace, the Porsche Taycan, the Mercedes EQS, the Ford Mark E and the Audi e-tron. But last week we had a big moment. The big Tesla bear and short seller Jim Chanos throwed in the towel and is ending his hedge fund. After he felt the pain of what we tried to warn him about for many years, don't bet against Elon and Tesla. But Jim wouldn't listen and now he has lost 97% of the worth of his fund since 2018. He went from managing over six billion dollars to only managing 200 million dollars. If Jim Chanos instead had invested just 1 billion of those 6 billion dollars in Tesla when they IPO'd and stayed long Tesla, the fund would have had at least 2 hundred billion dollars under management today. But no, not Jim Janos. He thought Tesla was worth nothing. Worthless. Zero. Um, well, we think the equity is worthless, so how's, how's zero? How's zero, Dennis? <laughs> because he thought they would go bankrupt. But even after Tesla survived the close call in 2018 with the ramp of the Model 3 in production hell, I thought, okay, now Tesla is home safe with this car. They have finally rammed up and made the first mass market electric vehicle that wasn't a little sorry or leaf. But not Jim Chanos. He just continued to say Tesla was his favorite short position. And even just two months ago, he said they were still short Tesla. Previous at Girl of Tesla, you are still short on, uh, but using options, yes? Uh, we are. We're, we're short. Uh, we're short the stock, and uh, we just think it's it's ridiculously overvalued. Right, uh, but betting against it has not worked out yet. What do you think? What <laughs> no, I've, no, I've noticed. Right, right. And me, 
the little YouTuber made a video about how wrong he was four and a half years ago. And no matter what Tesla did, like become profitable, even though Jim said that Tesla would never be profitable because they were structurally unprofitable. So Jim had so many chances to change his mind through the last four years, as Tesla proved him wrong over and over and over again. They would never be profitable, and they would go bankrupt, and the big boys were coming. You had said in June that you would give up the short once Tesla begins making money, and the predictions on that aren't until what later this year at the earliest. But analysts no, call it no, thinking no. second half of 2018. De- not even later this decade. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you don't see a turnaround uh, in the works here. Well, three years ago, Scarlett, this company was supposed to be making money now, and now it's supposed to be making money by 2020. And I'm guessing, you know, by 2019, we'll hear about 2025. Um, this company is structurally unprofitable. None of that came true. But he didn't change his mind. He would never admit he was wrong, but rather lose all of his clients' money than admit he was wrong. Even though Elon warned the short sellers, as he wrote on X, and yes, Elon warned the short sellers that there was a tsunami of hurt coming from them, and why. Elon and Tesla made the Tesla shorts. We have such a huge short position. Um, in fact, I, I think the short position may be as high as as one can actually go. I, I think that they're literally hit the ceiling on, on the short position. The shorts are, are in it to the hilt. And you um, believe they are 100% wrong? You know, I, I think it's very unwise to be shorting Tesla. I, I mean, it's just very unwise. I think there is... There's a tsunami of hurt coming for the for the short those holding a short short position. Okay. It's going to be very very unpleasant. I advise people to exit <laughs> while there is time. So I thought it would be a fun exercise and time to take a look back at how all of this competition Jim Chanos was talking about back in 2018 that was coming for Tesla and destroying Tesla and mainstream media called them Tesla killers. But what actually happened to all of these Tesla killers? Well, let's take a look at the competition that should have killed Tesla one by one. Let's start by looking at the competition here in Europe, as this was also the place many of the other short sellers like Mark B. Spiegel, Mr. B.S. and Gordon Johnson have said that Tesla would never succeed because there were too much competition here in Europe. So the EV that was hyped back then in 2018 and 2019 was the Jaguar I-Pace, the Audi e-tron, the Mercedes EQE, the Porsche Taycan. And we of course had the little Renault Zoe that was the king of Europe and many Tesla shorts used that to say, look, Tesla Model 3 will never beat the Zoe. So let's include the little Zoe to see what also happened to the former king of Europe as well and then compare it to the Tesla Model Y that has become the best-selling car in Europe of any kind, even though Mr. BS called it vaporware. That car would probably never happen, because his beloved Jaguar I-Pace would just destroy the Model Y on all specs. (laughs) Mercedes wheels out electric car roadmap, car and battery factories everywhere. I mean, this is Daimler, a real company, spending real money all over the world to build electric cars. I mean, they alone would crush Tesla. Hyundai is coming out with a 250 mile range crossover for the mass market. That's out later this year as a 2019 model. This is sort of the vaporware Tesla Model Y that we will probably never see. Well, Mr. BS, the Model Y didn't just beat the I-Pace. It has beaten every single EV out there. But not only that, it has beaten every single car out there. It is the best-selling car in the world. So sorry, Mark Spiegel. You couldn't have been more wrong even if you tried. And your beloved I-Pace. Well, it peaked in 2020 with 12,370 units sold here in Europe and have declined 
ever since and is dying as we speak. So sure, when it came out in 2018, it was able to do an over-the-air update, but it is one thing to have made the technology available. It is another thing to actually make some useful updates. It has only got two updates, and that was in the first year to fix some of the issues the car had and to bring the last features they have promised to its customers. So that was it. So the iPace has not gotten an over-the-air update for the last four years. <laughs> My four and a half year old Tesla Model 3 just got an over-the-air update last week. But also the slow charging speed of the iPace and the low range, I personally think are some of the most important things to why the car never was a success. And in all of its existence, Cumulatively, the iPace have sold only 44,575 units in Europe since they started deliveries in 2018. Compared to the vaporware car, the Model Y, that first came to the European market in 2021, but has already sold cumulatively six times as many units on half the time. <laughs> Just in 2023 alone, year to date, with two months to go, the Model Y has sold more than 150,000 units. So three times as much as the iPace has been able to do in six years, Tesla has sold in 10 months. But what about the e-tron? That was Norway's best-selling EV in 2020, beating the Tesla Model 3 and Boy, did we hear about that from the Tesla Q. Look, e-tron is beating Tesla in Norway. Tesla is doomed in Europe. But uh, that was the peak of the e-tron's time in Norway. And in all of Europe, it has been declining or flat during the last couple of years. But here in 2023, the sale has fallen off a cliff and it is a dying. Because I can't even buy it anymore as a new car here in Denmark. So far this year, it has only sold 2,010 units in Europe, again against Tesla's Model Y that has sold 154,282 units. So about 77 times more than the e-tron that is basically dead. But of all the Tesla killers, the e-tron is the one that cumulatively have sold the most, just above a 100,000 units since it started deliveries back in 2019. Again, the Model Y have sold more than that just last year, its first full year in Europe. <laughs> Mercedes has not really got any momentum off the EQC and the Taycan seems to have reached its peak as they have been just short of 15,000 units delivered a year, both in 2021 and in 2022, and it looks to be the same, maybe even a little bit less this year. So none of the so-called Tesla killers killed anything. You can add them all together, so cumulatively, sales of these four Tesla killers through the last six years, they have sold about 250,000 units combined. The Model Y that started selling in Europe in 2021, so less than three years ago, have cumulatively sold 292,227 units here in Europe. Looks more to me that Tesla has killed the Tesla killers and killed Jim Chano's hedge fund. But what about the affordable EV king of Europe, the Renault Zoe? Well, as we can see, it peaked in 2020 with some nice sales numbers of 87,109 units in Europe, but has been on a sharp decline ever since and has basically died here in Europe as Renault has not been able to come out with a new and exciting accessor to the Renault Zoe. Even cumulatively, since 2018 until now, the Zoe has only sold 257,183 units, so not beating the Model Y sales so far. And the Model Y is only rising. Last year, the Model Y sold 114,449 units, and so far this year, it has sold 154,282 units, and that does not even include all the numbers from all the countries as not all countries has released their numbers yet. So to all the people that said there is a demand problem in Europe for Tesla and Tesla is getting destroyed in Europe, well, they are not looking at the facts and doesn't know what they're talking about. Let's just look at the other one Jim Chanos was talking about that was coming for Tesla. 
and that was the Ford Mark E. Well, here is the sales of the Model Y against the Mark E in the US market. And remember, they came out the same year, the Y in March and the Mark E in December. Yeah, to have called that competition to the Tesla Model Y is probably one of the biggest joke a Jimmy boy have ever told. <laughs> Look at this. What a joke. But what about China, the most competitive market on the planet when it comes to EVs, the place that Mark B.S. said it would be freaking meaningless for Tesla to build a factory. <laughs> It would be freaking meaningless. There is already millions of electric car capacity either there now or there long before that factory can be open. And they'll just be a, a drop in the ocean if, if, they, if they don't go bankrupt first. Again, he couldn't have been more wrong, even if he tried. Well, the Model Y here in the month of October was number eight of the top 10 list of best-selling models of any kind in China, no matter powertrain. And is rising fast, as we can see the Model Y year-over-year -year growth in October, 83.1%. So not really seeing any demand problem here either. We can also look at the entire year of 2022, Tesla Model Y was the best-selling SUV of any kind. And the Model Y is also the best-selling BEV in China, which is kind of very big achievement as we have some really affordable EVs in China, but the Model Y is outselling BEVs that are seven times cheaper. Just insane. And that is also why in the first six months of 2023 here, Tesla has more profits on their BEV sold in China than the entire Chinese auto industry. So yes, there is a lot of competition in China when it comes to unit sales, but not really when it comes to profits. Then there is literally Tesla and then everyone else. So Tesla is doing extremely well in China, something Jim Chanos, Mark B. Spiegel, Gordon Johnson said would never happen. But the Germans are actually seeing demand problems in China. It was not Tesla the competition was coming for. It was for the old guys. Here is a chart showing you the entire German car industry's sales of BEVs in China January to September. So we're talking about the entire Volkswagen Group and BMW and Mercedes and all the Germans combined sold quite a bit less than just Tesla's Model Y. So Tesla's single model beat out the entire German car industry in China. Yes, it is a competitive market, but Tesla is one of the leaders in the market, and the Germans that were supposed to come and kill Tesla are literally dying in China. And why we see Volkswagen is discussing to fire 20,000 employees and cutting down on their EV production again and again and again, and is cutting paychecks by 20% as well. They are literally collapsing in front of our eyes together with Jim Chano's hedge fund. So I thought it was appropriate to celebrate a bit, as the video that basically kickstarted this channel about how wrong Jim Chanos and Bob Lotz were, and today we have Jim Chanos throwing in the towel. And like I talked about in that video four and a half years ago, the e-tron was supposed to be able to beat the Model S on specs, but couldn't even beat the Model 3 on specs, that was a much cheaper car. As I said in that video, the Model 3 was kind of the iPhone moment if the iPhone had cost half of the original price. The Tesla Model 3 was so much more affordable than all of these Tesla killers, but none of them could really beat the Model 3 on specs. So I didn't think four and a half years ago that they would eat into Tesla sales as they were not selling many units and Tesla was just by far the better value for money. And as it turned out, I was right. Jim Chanos was wrong. You can't even here in my country buy the e-tron anymore. Now it is the Q4 e-tron that has taken its place. So have they caught up by now? Nope. The story is still the same. The new refreshed Model 3, for example, has just made the iPhone moment even bigger. As you can get the new refreshed Model 3 long range for much less than it cost you to get the Audi Q4 e-tron. But the Q4 e-tron gets 
up to 530 kilometers of range and the model 3 long range have up to 678 kilometers of range and it does a 0 to 100 kilometers in 4.4 seconds and the Audi e-tron does that in 6.7 seconds charging speed for the e-tron is 150 kilowatts and the Tesla 550 kilowatts it's still loose on all counts and is more expensive. But last, that's an SUV against a sedan. Well, the Audi doesn't really make a sedan of their electric cars. They only have their Audi e-tron GT, and that is three times more expensive than the Tesla Model 3 refreshed. And no, you don't get a screen in the back, and you get 200 kilometers less range than the Tesla Model 3 long range. Because the GT is, of course, Audi's performance car, but they don't know how to make performance and efficiency in the same car. So you can choose to get range or performance, but not both. So even though the Audi GT is only 0.3 seconds faster than the Tesla long range version, it has 200 kilometers less range, even though its battery is bigger and the price tag is three times bigger. So this is just to say, no, they have not caught up yet here four years later. The Tesla killers has basically all died except the Taycan. And Tesla has gone from being the little company that sold 367,000 units in 2019 to be selling around 1.8 million here in 2023 and has become just as big as Audi in unit sales. So the big boys didn't come for Tesla. Tesla came for the big boys and are still coming. Tesla has hardly just begun. Just wait until the Cybertruck and especially the next generation vehicle comes to market. That will take Tesla to a whole new level once again. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.